Hello, my name is Peter Shook, otherwise known as uh, Spinning Top of Doomer on the internet. I work at Bendyworks doing uh, software consulting, and t I was originally going to talk today about uh, how to build an alien spaceship, about how to avoid the Grey Goose situation when building your own nano machines, what cup of tea is best for powering your infinite improbability drive, Earl Grey Hut is the answer, of course, and how to make your spaceship bigger on the inside than on the outside. But of course, these are all fictional technologies and impossible to create in the real world, so let's talk about some real alien technology. LISP, or more specifically, closure. That uh, Recently, a paper came out uh, detailing some good improvements to uh, closure's hash maps that one of the core pieces of our loved alien spaceship, and they made some really good performance improvements, and they claimed that they got like doubling performance for iteration or anti quality checking. And they called these new improved hash map data structure, compressed hash array map prefix tree, or CHAMP for short. And I decided, why not to see if this actually works in the real world? So I ported it over to ClojureScript. The ClojureScript implementation is under the GitHub repo of Bendyworks lean dash map. And you can go check it out if you want to. And when I implemented this, I found that the performance improvements did, in fact, hold out in the real world, and that not only that, but the resulting uh, code impl implementation was a lot simpler to boot. So what can Champ do for your hash maps? Well, it can give them a lot of pep. It can give them, uh, it can improve the iterations performance by doubling it performance iteration speed, and it not only doubling or tripling or even quadrupling equ equality checks, but it can, increase equality check speed by a more magnitude, about 10 to 100 times more performance. And also, that it trims your hash maps all while doing this. That you may have known your hash maps have been growing a little bit uh, pudgier on the edges, that they may be wearing more relaxed hit punctuation like the open parentheses, and with Champ, we can go from these relaxed hit punctuations back to the high school punctuations that they wore. And now, I know what a lot of people here may be thinking, oh great, I'm gonna need to be a wizard to do this. I'm gonna need to have a Latin correspondence course. I'm gonna need to le learn the semantic components to do this and have a, a degree in black magic bit twiddling and also like, know the special magic keywords like um, monad, isomorphism, or burrito in order to do this. But one of the happiest uh, coincidence that I found while implementing this that Champ makes hash maps wieldy, that it makes them a lot, makes them consensually simpler and easier to implement, and like the resulting code size was about two-thirds the current implementation size that exists in ClojureScript when it's all said and done. So before I dig into it, let's go to an overview of Clojure hash maps so that we're all on the same page. That Clojure hash maps are a tree of nodes with a 32-way branching factor. There's the root node right there with as many as 32 subnodes. And inside a node, there is an array with up to 32, uh, up to 30, size of 32 that has key value pairs and references to nodes at the lower levels, which I'll call subnode references for the remainder of this talk. And there's metadata on the node to tell where a key is located inside of a node's array. So in this example, the metadata says that key foo is located in the zeroth slot in the nodes array, and that the key three is located at the second slot in the nodes array. And finally, here's how a key finds a node inside the tree that, in this example, we're taking the hash of foo, and we then partition the hash up into groups of five bits each, so we take this long big number over here and divide it into like the first five bits are the are 20, the next bits are 10, and the next bits are 18. And these represent the different levels of the tree. The first five bits are the root nodes hash, the next five bits are the hash level hash of the level below that, and the next five bits are the level below that, and so on. And when we have a collision of two hashes of two keys having the same hash for a level, we simply go down a level and then use the next five bits of the hash extending the precision needed for that. So in this example, that 
we see that, the key f that for the first two hashes of the key foos, 20 and 10, that there are other keys that have that same hash for those same levels. So when we finally get down to the 18 node, that we find that we have no, no keys that collide with that, so that is the correct node for that. Are there any questions about this? All right. So let's get to the first major improvement that uh, Champ brings, that it removes a lot of the problem with uh, subnode references. That the first major problem with subnode reference is that a subnode reference is a pseudo key value pair that they ha has nil as a key. That you can see here that there's key value, key value, and then there's subnode reference that looks exactly like a key value only with nil as the key. So this, of course, has the problem of like doubling the overhead for each subnode reference that we're wasting memory with this. But in my opinion, a lot worse is that it has a whole bunch of incidental complexity that in a we can't store a nil key that we can't store nor key in our hash maps anymore. So we have to have two additional fields on our hash map data structure, one for a, as a flag to say is do we have a nil key or not, and another field to store the value for the nil key if it exists. And to get better performance, we have to have an optimized node which is known as an array node that uh, just contains subnode references. And this array node is created whenever a normal node has it gets full or has uh, 32 elements, then we take the normal node and create an array node that, and that, and there's a whole bunch of further complications with the second problem with subnode references in that subnode references are scattered throughout a node's array. As you can see here, that we have a key value, then we have the subnode reference, then we have key value, key value, and another subnode reference. There's no rhyme, no reason, to why, to where they are located. So this means that uh, for every single operation for association, dissociation, iteration, and lookup, that we have to keep this in mind that when we look at a key value pair, is this a for reals key value pair or is this a subnode reference? And this just adds a whole bunch of mental overhead, number one, and it makes the code a lot less clear for that, that you don't really see the intent of what does, and if you want to add any other operations, that you have to always keep this in mind. And in addition, having subnode references scattered throughout the subnode references scattered throughout the array makes iteration a wikiwalk. For these who don't know, a wikiwalk is where you take it, go to a page in Wikipedia, see something interesting, click on the link, go to that next page, click a lot more links, go to a lot more pages, and then like eight hours later. And 30 tabs later, you're like looking at hairstyles of the early Byzantine Empire for whatever reason and have no idea how you got back, where you came from or where you got back. And this is how iteration works currently with hash, with, uh, hash maps, that the instant they, see, they, they walk through the array and then the instant they see a subnode reference, they have to go follow that link down and down. And to give you an overview of why this is bad, let's go through a sample wiki walk. All right, we're looking at the Roman Empire, and we see immediately a link of the Roman Republic. Let's click that. Then we see the link of ancient Roman civilization. So let's click on that, and we click on lots more links, links and links. And we end up at awareness, finally at the bottom with no more links. So we're done, and now we have to go all the way back up. And I have a question for all of you. What was the next word after Roman Republic? Does anybody know? <laughs> All right. No, it was period. And this indicates why the Wikiwalk iteration is very bad. It has very, very bad locality that both temporally and spatially, you like, divide up the, your array when you're going through it and you just uh, don't have the locality that is good for like modern CPUs, especially with their caches. But, so. What does Champ bring to this uh, problem? Well, here's the Champ nodes improvements. That first we put, make sure that key value pairs are in front and some of references are in back. This removes the need to have the nil marker value so that uh, we can save space. 
and we decomplex the metadata. That we have the metadata right here, and then we divide it into key value metadata and two node metadata so that we always know that where we're pointing to inside of the array, that we know if we're at pointing to a key value pair or if we're pointing to a subnode reference. And this, of course, lowers the memory overhead for, because we can remove the known marker values, but that's like the most basic improvement that I see. That the bigger one is that look at all this complexity that we have moving, that we no longer need any flat, any extra fields to hold a nil key value pair, and we don't need an optimized array node that we can just have one node for all the map, and we remove the Windows type thing where we ask, are you sure this is a subnode reference or not? Every single operation that we can just remove a lot of that complexity and makes the intent of the operations on our data structure a lot more clear. And as a great bonus, we get twice the performance by changing iteration from a wiki walk where we go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down the data structure. That's basically a graph traversal of the data structure into a linear scan where we just can go straight through the array. And to show you like the, that's simp like the simplification that Champ brings to iteration, let's <coughs> show you the current hash map iteration. That first we check the, if the hash map has a nil flag or not, and if it does, then we return the nil key value pair, and then we go to the tree proper, and then we have two flavors of nodes. For normal nodes, we iterate through the key value pairs, and we then say, is this key nil or not? If it's not, then we have a for real key value pair and can return that to the user. If it's not, then we have a subnode reference, so then we follow the reference to the node below it and repeat the algorithm. And then for array nodes, we iterate through all the elements. If the element is nil, then we continue through the iteration. Otherwise, we're at a subnode reference and we follow that reference and repeat the algorithm again. Compare that to Champ's iteration algorithm. Just go straight through all the key value pairs, then iterate through the subnode references, repeating the first step. Let's go through comparison. Seven lines versus two lines of high level algorithm. We have three conditionals in the current implementation versus none. And we have to have polymorphism in the current implementation versus no polymorphism needed in the champs implementation. Is there any questions or clarifications you want on uh, the improvement to iterations and nodes of the subnode references? All right, now let's go on to the second big improvement that Champ brings, that uh, in quality check improvements. I have a closure puzzler that I like to call superficial cleaning. That will have to put on your thinking. I know it's after lunchtime, but let's go through with it anyway. That we have a empty hash map right here that we create. Then we go in the next expression, we associate a million elements onto the hash map, and then we disassociate all those elements off of the hash map and end up with a empty map. And then we check that both of the maps are the equal using, as, using the equality check so that they're equal in the eyes of closure. And then we try some uh, performance testing with this. So for the, we do an into an empty hash map for the, our first hash map, and that takes 140 microseconds. And my question for you all is how long does it take for the next timing thing? That is the exact same operation on, as far as closure is concerned, the exact same map. How many, <laughs> how many people think it's A, that they're the same map, so they should be roughly the same? <laughs> we got a few hands for that. How many thinks it'll take double the speed for some unknown reason? Do we see, have any Bs? See one B. <laughs> How many take, thinks it takes C? 10 times the other. All right, a lot more hands. How many thinks it takes like almost 100 times as long? How many thinks it's D? A few more. And finally E. How many thinks it takes about 200 times longer to do this exact same operation? <laughs> wow, I see one. The answer is E, it takes 200 times as long to perform the exact same operation for, as far as closure is concerned, 
the exact same hash map, that they're both equal maps according to closure and they're both empty. So why is it taking so long? The problem lies in the deletion algorithm. It does a pretty superficial delete that when we do the deletion algorithm, we're, in this example, we're removing three from the hash map that it goes and finds the node that three is located under, removes the three from the array, then makes a new, array, new node with that array, and does the path copying to do all the immutability bookkeeping, and that's about it. And superficial cleaning leads to something horrific. So here's a nice, innocent hash map that has key value pairs, is all nice bopping along. And before I go to the next slide, I may warn you, this is quite horrific, and those of you weak constitutions may want to look away. <laughs> ah, sorry, it's very, very scary. You can see that these two maps have the exact same structure, the same nodes, and you really could tell that they look like the same thing at a glance. That we have the same exact no number of nodes, the same subnode references, and the same structure. That this is the problem with the current deletion algorithm, that you can't remove empty nodes, you can't remove some node references, and that's why we got the 200 times slowdown in our puzzler. It was because that even though we did del deletion of the million elements, all the nodes, all the subnode references were still there, so that when we had to do the into, which needs iteration, that we had to go through and check every single node, every single subnode reference to see, hey, do you have any key value pairs or not? And that just leads to the horrible performance. So what can we do about this? Well, Champ has a solution for this. It's a still the same basic algorithm that we saw before, but there's two additional tweaks to uh, make it uh, much better than the current one. That we, when we do a deletion, in this case we're deleting the key three, that if we see that the node array has just one key value pair, that instead of just deleting, that instead of just going through the normal operation and being done, that we go and move the key value pair up to the subnode reference, replacing the subnode reference with the current key, with the key value pair. And if we have a chain of those, in this example that the deletion is, that we're deleting three again, and then we end up with, after moving it up one uh, parent reference, that we still have a array with one key value pair that we keep on going up until we end up with either at the root node or we have a node with more than one key value pair inside of it. And this, of course, lowers the memory overhead from the SOCH that we can get some minor memory overhead improvements. But really, so what? What does this actually give us? This, like, closure puzzler only really happens in the pathological case. You're not gonna have, like, 10,000, 100,000, or a million element uh, large hash maps that you're just going to remove 99.9 .9 or 99.5% of them and then use that. You're, that is an extreme edge case. What does this really bring us? What's the payoff? The payoff is that equal chant maps are not only equal in the eyes of closure, they are physically equal, that they have the exact same memory layout. And this allows us to allows us to uh, not only compare on key values, but we can now compare on nodes. And this means that, that equality checking goes from a order of linear time algorithm to a logarithmic algorithm, leading to 100 times performance improvements. And when I like, first implemented this, I really didn't believe what I was seeing when I was doing the micro benchmarks. I like, saw it go from like, 500 millisecond checks to five millisecond checks and was really, really like unsure. Like, what did I do wrong? How is this possible? Just not me. So I played around with it a little bit and figured out that this is only when the map share structure, that this is because if you have two maps that uh, share some structure like this, that here's like the first map that we're uh, playing with in the pinkish red and that we make some changes to, and have another map that is the light blue, that the nodes, that they share a lot of the same nodes which are exactly equal, point, the pointer references are the same in memory, so that when we uh, do equality checks on nodes, we can, like, 
we just had to stop right here and don't have to compare the nodes below there that since this is physically equal in memory that all this below it will be equal in memory so that we only have to compare the nodes that are not equal, the light pink and the blue, that we only have to compare that. So, and the nodes that are not equal, that are not physically equal in memory are very, very small for most operation for most maps, especially when you get into very, very large maps. So this gives us the linear time speed up. But you may be asking what happens in the worst case where we have two physical, two maps, which are, I have the identical key list of key value pairs, but are separated in memory. The good news is that we still get a 10 times performance increase for maps that don't share structure. That the reason for this is that the current comparison algorithm has a lot of overhead due to using the closure abstractions of sequences and lookups that the current equality check generates a sequence for the first map and then checks that the key value pairs for that sequence are equal to the second map by doing a lookup. And the sequence abstraction has a lot of overhead due to the more alloca due to allocation and pointer chasing and then once we do find the key value pair that we want to compare, we have to do a lookup which destroys any like temporal or spatial locality that we possibly have for this comparison. But with the champ comparison, we can compare directly on nodes so that we're directly comparing two arrays. And that's about the fastest comparison you can do for a collection. It's just the only, the only overhead that is really added is the closure equality check, which is incidental compared to the overhead that have uh, sequences and lookup generate. So does anybody have any questions or some clarifications on this? Yes? I had a question. Is, is the chance of scope uh, lower than the other one? Just got to move to the No, it is not. Actually, the, it's about the same for uh, the current algorithm. It's, uh, Probably like within like margin of error, I guess source going it goes like up and down whether it's about the same because you're not for that you're having like extra garbage collection because you're having to remove extra stuff and you're having to do the extra steps, but you're also removing a whole bunch of empty nodes and sub node references so that what you're deleting is getting smaller and smaller every time. It's not staying the same size, so that if we go b back to whoop, here. Like for example, if you want to go and delete something here, imagine this had like more key value pairs that uh, you have to go keep on going down and down every single time for the current implementation and that would take, slow things down there. So it's about a wash compared for Dishosh. Any other questions? All right. Here we go. And when I think that like the champ improvements pave the way for a lot of future improvements that can be made for hash maps that two of the big improvements I can think of at the top of my head are like merging and diffing that they current use, they use closure abstractions and think that they, we can uh, get like at least doubling the performance of this by uh, like, uh, just using the uh, champ abstractions and that this will be similar in uh, ideas to how RRB vectors work for vectors. But for, and CHAMP is not as cool as working with nanobots, but I think it's a great addition to the alien spaceship that we know and love called Closure. And it shows that there is still plenty of room at the bottom, especially like for immutable data structures that we still have a long way to go, that we can get doubling or even orders of magnitude of performance on basic operations and lower memory overhead to boot. But for me, like the biggest win is this makes hash maps so much more accessible and easier to understand and implement that I like read the code behind hash maps before and the bit twiddling was a bit of a stumbling block, but the bigger one was like all the complexities that have to deal with uh, what champ cleans away that it just makes it a lot simpler to understand the intent of the code I found when doing that. And I think that closure hash maps are one of our best exports that not only is our ba basic uh, hash map data structure that it's that data structure for Scala, it's 
or Elixir, and that's been like ported to even the imperative languages like Ruby and JavaScript via Hamster and Immutable JS. And I think that we can, with the champ improvements, the complex, the over, like the overhead and the conceptual weight is a lot lowered, so that more and more people can pick it up and implement it, and that for like future pu functional programming languages, that this should be, should be, and can be the data structure of choice to go and pick it up. So I think that this, these improvements make it a lot easier to do. I'd like to give a lot of thanks. I'd like to give thanks to my employer, Bendyworks, for supporting my work on doing the closure skip port on this and uh, helping with the talk. I'd like to thank Michael Steindarfer and Hergen Vindu for writing the champ paper, Zach Tillman for writing collection check, which I used extensively for testing out that my map implementation was correct for very property-based testing. And Martin Klepsch for pouring it over the closure script. There was a lot of tricky macros that collection check used that I tried to implement and failed. And Martin just did that for me. And Nicholas Berger helped me set up the test harness so that uh, I could actually run the test. And finally, David Nolan helped me out with uh, some profiling and performance tuning suggestions. And I'd like to give Special thanks to my coworker Cliff Rogers for letting me talk for hours on end about this and uh, helping me uh, go through this talk. And that is it. Then. Any questions? <laughs> I talked with Alex Miller yesterday about that. He s said that, uh, according to Rich, that it looked cool, but they had to be prove this out. That they wanted also to like test it against like major uh, like cl closure cord bases and uh, see that it was actually <coughs> working in there. And so far, I've like had trouble getting a Soch to be quite as fast as. Uh, the current implementation of a SOCH that there's like 15% slowdown in there and that the transient uh, a SOCH is also a very tricky problem. Fortunately, like when I flew in here, like, oh, there may be something to do. The reason that it's slower, at least for what I think, and I think it's proven out that the, this implementation has, can, you can expand the array up to uh, 64 elements, whereas with the current implementation, it's only up to 32, so that gets into CPU caching, and also when you want to copy the array for immutability, that, that takes longer to copy. So what my idea was to get that 15% down is to, instead of having the key value pairs directly on the array, create a key value data type and then store that uh, data type on the array instead of directly the key value pair directly. And that got it down to like about 6% overhead and hopefully the transient associate will be implementable and more, a lot more easily than it would have been. But it's up to uh, someone in the community to prove that this works and is uh, reasonably be performed. Okay. You did, a, you did a fantastic explanation, <laughs> but I didn't think it was explained too much. <laughs> in, a, in the sense that you made it seem very easy. You made it say, like, instead of this random collection of whatever, we also have to figure out what we're looking at. Let's put the key value pairs first, then let's put the pointers. Yeah. I really don't. I think that it's a obvious when you see it type of thing. That okay. that uh, at least it was to me is like, wow, this makes a lot. It took me a while to understand what they were actually saying when I read the paper, and then like pouring it over. There was a Java implementation for that uh, the Rascal language uses for this. I think that is correct. But uh, yeah, I just saw it like, wow, this. Why didn't people think of this for it? But it's like a lot of stuff like. Uh, like the best thing I can think of is like relativity. Like why didn't people think that, uh, I mean the equations for relativity are really, really simple, but it took an Einstein in order to think of them that there's a lot of stuff that you can say, oh, this looks, why didn't people think of this before? But it's really, really hard to make that conceptual leap. And I mean, 
it's been, yeah, like Rich and David Nolan and a whole bunch of other people have looked at this and not made this leap. So I think it still shows that there's a lot of things that are easy and will be like conceptual leaps that will be possible in the future. So I think that you just touched on a point though, like what we used to originally look at the hands of Cambridge. Oh, that was a David Nolan tweet and I just looked at it. <laughs> so I just looked at it and like, oh, that would be really neat if that were actually true and possible. So closure script is a lot easier to implement uh, core data structures in than uh, closure. So I figured why not to give it a try and like was very pleasantly surprised, especially like two thirds the size of the code. Woo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have an enclosure script right here. Whoop, boop, 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 boop. Did this actually use the enclosure script for that? Yeah, you can sit, uh, I'll get to that. That there, I have an operation which uh, sets maps to be lean maps. So that uh, you can have, like do a comparison, say like, for now I want all maps to be uh, lean maps instead of the uh, champ maps instead of uh, normal maps. And you can set it back to closure script maps. And go that back and forth, and like, is it a lean map? Is it a lean map sequence? And is it a hash map, etc.? So, if I wanted to use this on server side closure, what would I have to do? Um, implement it. <laughs> 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 that it, I did this in closure script because it was, I know JavaScript and closure script a lot better than uh, Java. So, and that uh, is a lot easier to get the low level implementations inside of closure script than it is in closure. So uh, I think uh, the person who is presenting uh, like gay HDAI, I don't want to mispronounce his name, is looking into it in the closure dev list and there has been like some talk on that. But uh, it's up to the community as far as I have been told to implement this. So this is only available for closure script. If you like want to discuss uh, how to port to closure and Java, I'd be happy to discuss. Yes. Uh, no, I've just been uh, like working on this and then like got accepted for the talk and was like, oh my God, I have to prepare a talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was just busy working on this and making sure that it was a good explanation for what the actual structure was. But yeah, uh, come and talk with me later and I'll go, did not know that. Thank you. How am I doing on time? Good. All right, we have five more minutes, so I'd like one more question, if anybody has one. All right, and uh, if you want to talk to me more about this, don't be afraid to approach me. I'm probably much shyer and more of an introvert than you are, so don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy to talk with you about it at any time. Thank you.